Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to make not a pie, nearly a pie. I'm going to make a kind of copycat of the Frey Bentos steak and kidney. A couple of shout outs before we start. One to Levi Lustman, who made a donation via PayPal a while ago. Thank you. And also to Sam Aitchison and John, who requested that I do something like this and show you how it should be done because uh, I did a review of the Frey Bentos Not Really a Pie uh, a couple of weeks ago and it was okay but you know I'd only got that pie actually I got two of them um, because they were on a special offer £1.50 each for Tesco Club Card customers that offer has ended now they're now £3 before that offer started they were £2 so there's some you know shiftiness going on Mr Tesco anyway I saved those tins so I'm going to use those I'm going to make a steak and kidney filling and stick a puff pastry top on it and no I'm not making my own puff pastry this time so if you enjoy this video give it a like share subscribe etc ring the bell ding a ding ding and let's get on with it Frey Bentos style steak and kidney, not a pie. For the filling, I've got far too much stuff. This will easily do the two pies and quite a few more besides. So I've got 650 grams of shin of beef from a butcher. Look at that, fantastic stuff. And two pig's kidneys. Uh, I've got medium onion. I've got two bay leaves, a small handful of flat leaf parsley, salt, pepper, and some beer. You want some kind of, you know, brown beer rather than a, a yellow, feeble, lager type beer. And also some stock. This happens to be chicken stock that I made recently. You know, obviously you can use a cube. You can use beef as well. I rarely make beef stock because I almost never have beef bones. So um, that's why. So I'm going to cook the beef and gravy first and then add the kidneys afterwards so they don't get cooked for hours and hours because they really don't need it. So let's do some prep. Let's chop up this onion, de-skin it. And magic knife it. I'm going to saute the chopped onion in a bit of oil on medium heat, uh, well medium low heat, just to soften it, not really to brown it and that will take five minutes. While that's happening I'll prep the beef and cut off any sinew bits of fat and just basically dice it actually quite small because the Frey Bentos tin isn't very deep and if you've got big lumps of meat they're gonna show up as bumps in your pastry so you do have to cut it small. Then toss your chunks of beef in flour, remove the onion from the frying pan, add more oil if it's needed and then saute the beef for a few minutes till it's browned all over. You might need to do this in two batches. While the beef is cooking, I'm gonna deal with these kidneys. They are a bit smelly. <laughs> a lot of people complain that, you know, they, they smell of wee. I've, I've never really noticed that, but I've never had pork kidneys before. I usually use lambs. Um, but yeah, these are definitely not great. <laughs> so we'll just soak them in the milk for probably half an hour. Now you've got three options to cook your filling. The quickest is the pressure cooker, which is what I'm using. So that will take 20 minutes. Um, a regular saucepan on the stove top will take three and a half hours and a slow cooker crock pot will take six hours on medium or eight hours on high. So it's up to you. But as always, I haven't got time. So I'll just hook in the onions and the first batch of the meat. Now I'll get the second batch cooking. And add the beer. That's a 500ml bottle, by the way. And the stock. That's also about 500ml. Now we chop the parsley, quite fine. And that can go in the pot along with the bay leaves, a good pinch of salt, 
and a good grind of pepper. I put that on the stove, bring it to the boil, put the lid on, and when it comes up to pressure, we'll give it 20 minutes and then see how we're getting on. So the meat's had its 20 minutes under pressure and is now depressurizing. So I'm gonna <laughs> chop the kidneys up. Again, we want quite small pieces, same size as the beef. Earlier when I put the beer in, uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting that that's anything like the authentic recipe, I'm pretty sure. If I check the ingredients, nope, there's no beer in there. There's always a, a core of gristle in kidneys that, you know, you want to avoid. Now I'm going to saute the kidneys for about four or five minutes just to get them a bit brown all over. But you know, really, kidneys, kidneys don't take a lot of cooking. Right, there's far too much filling in there, so I'm going to transfer it into a much bigger pan, um, which also has a, a greater surface area, so it can evaporate the excess liquid more quickly. So we'll come back when that's reduced by about half. While that's happening, I'm going to roll out the pastry lids. I have got um, just roll for pastry in a block. You can get it ready rolled, but it actually works out at more than twice the price because those rolling machines don't work for nothing. Anyway, there's uh, 500 grams here, which is too much. It needs to be kind of room temperature before you start using it. And you want to have some flour on your top. bit bigger. You know, I'll wake up one day and I'll find that I have mastered the art of rolling pastry into circles, but you know, not yet. All right, that'll do it. So I'll just trim off the excess and do the other one. Okay, the liquid is reduced, but it's the uh, consistency isn't right. It should be quite thick. So I'm going to make a slurry of corn flour, cornstarch. And water. Then we add that to the gravy and after a couple of minutes, it should have thickened up. Right, we're almost done. So if you're using a fan oven, a convection oven, or an air fryer, you want that heated to 180 degrees Celsius. For a conventional oven, you want it on 200, and for gas, it's six. So here's my two tins, which fit conveniently into the little tray for the air fryer oven. And just put a load of filling in. Actually, this is quite, quite a bit bigger than, uh, than I remember. I might not have enough. All right, there's um, there's that much left over. So we'll do something interesting with that and the remaining pastry. Um, I'm a bit worried that, you know, it's still steaming. I don't know if I should wait until it's cooled down somewhat, but um, I'm not going to. <laughs> so I'll just dunk your pastry on there. And I think we're trying to stick it to the tin a bit. As I recall, the Frey Bentos ones were actually stuck to the tin. A little bit of egg wash. This is beaten egg with a tiny bit of milk in it. Just paint your lid. And we'll bake those for 20 minutes, I think. We haven't got the spectacular rise that you get with um, Frey Bentos, but uh, 
well, we'll see what we've got. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how the puff pastry has actually turned out underneath the, the crunchy top. Because if you recall, the Frey Bentos horror of the uncooked layers of pastry, which many people like, but I don't really. Well, still pretty weird. <laughs> ah, okay, not pies. They look pretty good, and that filling looks sensational. Mmm. Wow. Oh. Yeah, the oh dear. Pastry is just not right. You know my opinion of puff pastry on pies? Phew. Not right. Shouldn't be done. There you go. But look at this filling. Imagine if this really was a Frey Bentos pie and you got all that. It'd be over at moon. And it's beautiful. It's delicious. Wow. Well done, me. Okay, if I did that again, I really wouldn't do puff pastry. I'd do short crust. But uh, an interesting experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. Press like if you did, or even if you didn't. And thanks for watching, and see you next time.